Tadas Tower, 312, Papa Delta, it's called Shore 35, I'm ready for takeoff. 312 Papa Delta, but off the tower, runway 35 at Charlie, clear for takeoff, left turn out approved. Clear for takeoff, runway 35. You, you people can expect some uh, crazy stuff. I mean, I'm not normal at all. I'm sick in the head, mentally. Just crazy. He's a piece of work, as you well know. He's like all over the place. You know, he's, uh, he's ADD, for sure. Do you want me to lean forward like this, or do you want me to kind of like perch up? We do fun stuff, we have fun. Hard work's one thing, fun's another thing. We do the hard work and then we have fun. Well, the early days, it all started way back when. Back in New York, riding a little Z50 in the yard. It wasn't me, it was my husband. <laughs> he had a bike and he, you know, did trails and rode in sand pits with his friends. And then they saw there was a peewee track. And so he's like, yeah, I'm gonna get Justin a little bike. And that's how that started. Rain goes, you gotta play some sports or something. And I said, uh, nah, you know, I don't, I don't wanna, you wanna play soccer? Nah, you wanna play football? Nah, you wanna play this, baseball? Nah, you wanna race dirt bikes? Yeah. What's up, y'all? I'm Justin Barsha. <laughs> we started out just having fun not realizing that, you know, all this was going to happen. We used to go to the track, camp out once in a while, you know, just having fun. And now look, <laughs> I think back about it, it's so crazy that I was just like, yeah, let's race dirt bikes. And uh, I started racing in New York and uh, locally, and you know, my dad raced a little bit when I started racing and uh, practiced every day after school. Had a lot of dentist appointments to, you know, to get half days and stuff. <laughs> it was other people saying like he was gonna go somewhere and we were just kind of like, you know, whatever. We still weren't thinking about racing outside of the district. It's crazy, uh, one of my good friends took me down to MTF and uh, got me a week camp and um, it's all history after that, <laughs> crazy. Colleen was like, you know, you want to stay here? And I, I guess I turned her head a little bit, and that was cool for me. I was pumped, you know, I was just some little punk kid on a CR85, beat up bikes, and uh, just having fun, you know, just riding my dirt bike. I was just loving, loving life. And uh, she said I could stay, and uh, my mom stayed up in New York and worked and sent us money down, and my dad was my mechanic and tuned the bike. I just kept myself busy. I got a few more jobs and just stayed working all the time, sending them money. But eventually, it got to me, and I told them, we need to sell the house in New York, so sold the house, and then we just moved to MTF. Most, most of the kids were a lot older, and I was one of the younger kids there, so it was like, kind of almost get bullied a little bit, but I was such a little punk, and I didn't care, so I just threw it back at them, and you know, I got duct taped to a lot of trees and a lot of wedgies, but it was just fun, and I think to this day, you know, it kind of made me who I am a little bit. Kid, put me on the rocks, you little girl. Come and get me. Before I went to MTF, I was actually kind of a nice kid. And then, uh, <laughs> turned into a little punk. Exactly what he was. He was a punk, the leader of the punks. Yeah, Joey and then Maze and Justin and, uh, just those three together, they were just a punk of everyone there. I'm standing all alone, buried in my wit, high style environment. Why am I even trying this? This isn't me, they keep telling me, persist in me and you. Yeah, they got what they wanted. <laughs> I just did it because Justin was so good and they wanted it. You just and he always tried really hard, so how could you not? Yeah, it's great. I'm so happy. Just I had a bad start this whole way in the end and just fought through the pack. It was really good. You know, I never thought about it as a job, I never thought about it as anything until probably my you know my last year amateurs like man I you know I can go pro you know and but before that 85s 125 two strokes I was just like this is fun I love it and you know I still do to this day it's fun and I love it but now I get to do it for a living so it's pretty cool 
to be on the you know the pro level right now in the top class you know there's so many fast guys and uh, the, the hard work and dedication it takes is pretty pretty intense it sticks living that's for sure uh, you can see this mustache I mean I'm trying to fit in with the neighbors and stuff saying this winning was my first medal Wide open, just oh, all the time, ADD, ADD. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to switch you, I want to do that. Doing something to forget it here, going there. It's just wide open constantly. You want to see my lifestyle? This is where it be at. Crack about. The biggest thing for me right now is to ha still have fun and do the hard stuff too. And I've kind of started figuring that out and getting a good balance with that. I feel super strong and I have a good time with my friends. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about to me is to have fun. and to be uh, an animal on the bike and an animal off the bike. It's definitely tough racing with these guys every weekend and they're, they're so fast. And there's no like, yeah, I rode pretty good this weekend and I still got on the podium. You have to ride perfect to get on the podium and win a race. And, in this time and age, so it's uh, it's definitely been super tough, but uh, it's it's definitely a challenge, and that's what keeps me, you know, motivated. His first pro race, Glen Helen. I kind of broke down at that race. I got I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> I was crying, not in front of Justin because I didn't want him to see that, but I was really upset because you know, you look at that. That was the first time, like looking at that track. It's gnarly it's crazy and looking at him I'm, I went to my husband I'm like you got him on that gate with all those grown men and we shouldn't have did this I just was scared I got really scared you know it, it was definitely a, a new experience going pro you know I didn't know how things would be no one really explained anything to me very well and I just kind of went in there and uh, Glen Helen went uh, it went pretty good you know I, I led a lot of laps and turned a lot of heads for sure so that was cool and uh, it was, it, was, it was pretty crazy. You know, if I stopped racing tomorrow, I would say no, I wouldn't be happy with, uh, you know, what I've done so far. I mean, yeah, I'd be happy with the two Super Rust championships I won for sure, but there's, you know, 450 championships that I haven't won yet, and that, that would, uh, that, that, that's the next thing that I feel like I need to accomplish. I mean, the sky's the limit, you know, it's, it's really as hard as, as he wants to push it and, and as far as he wants to make because in the, the day it's it's his career and it's, it's where he wants to go with it so I think he's going to be one of the people when he leaves the sport it, he sets the bar to where the next guy is like okay well I want to be faster than, than Barsha you know what I mean I feel like it was Carmichael and Stewart now Villo and hopefully when he's up there it's one better than Barsha. Only 21 right now but I think uh you know, one day when I finish out my career, I hope to hope to look back and uh, have a few uh, Supercross and Motocross championships in the outdoor class and uh, a few donations titles. And you know, that's uh, I think when you look at like a guy like Carmichael and Stewart and you know McGrath and all those guys, I, if I was them, I would look back right now and go, man, you know, I won pretty much everything I could have won. And when I when I'm finished racing one day, I hope to look back and say, yeah, I won, you know, all those races and all those championships and make me feel good about myself.